Hello everyone. Let's use some of my favorite infusible ink to make some cute ornaments to match my Christmas tree. Let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to Crafting with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, we are going to be making some ceramic ornaments to go on my Christmas tree because this year we are decorating our tree with red, black, and white. So I am using my favorite pattern of infusible ink and I was kind of playing around with it. That's why I still have on my gloves before this tutorial started. This is one of the ornaments. This is one side and this is how the other side looks. And I haven't decided which way I like it the best, but I'm going to play around with it and give you options. So in case you plan on making these, you'll have options also. At the end of this video, if you find it helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Now, without further ado, let's get started. The materials I'm using for this project include my Cricut Explore Air 2, Cricut Infusible Ink in Buffalo Check. I'll use heat resistant gloves, a green standard grip mat, Cricut heat resistant tape, PYD Life Sublimation Ceramic Ornaments. This is a 25 pack and they are 2.75 inches. If you are going to use a Cricut Easy Press, I highly suggest using an Easy Press mat so you can put the ornaments on when they're cooling. I'm also going to use butcher paper and the heat press that's back there, that's the 16 by 20 auto open Walla Press that I purchased from Heat Transfer Warehouse. You can use a Cricut Easy Press. However, you will increase the temperature to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, let's head over to Cricut Design Space. I am in Cricut Design Space and I'm connected to my Cricut Explore Air 2. The first thing I'm going to do is go to the left panel and select a circle. I will resize the circle to a size of 2.75. The reason why I'm sizing it at 2.75 is because that is the size of the blanks I'm using. However, this is only going to serve as a template for the words. Next, I'm going to select the text box and I'm going to use a system font that I've downloaded from Creative Fabrica. The first font that I'm using is one that's called Boho and I am going to type M-Y-L-E-S and I'm going to make sure it fits nicely in the circle. First, I'll change the color of the circle to a lighter gray and then I will just double check by moving the name inside the circle to make sure it fits without touching the outer lines of the circle. I will select a second text box and this time I will type the text Merry Christmas and I will decrease the size of the text to make sure it fits nicely in the circle. Remember, I'm not resizing the circle because the size of the blanks that I'm using are 2.75. That fits nicely. This is still the Boho font. I'm going to select a third text box and this time I'm going to type Peter and Delanda. This time, however, I am going to use a different font. I'm looking for one that's called Baking Pastry and I am going to decrease the amount of space that's in between the lines. So I'm at the top menu and I'm on the option for line space and I decrease the line space all the way down to negative 4.0. Now I'm reducing the size of our names and making sure they fit nicely in the circle. I will continue this process for the next three names that are going to go on the ornaments. I'll speed this next part up. 
I typed Madison and I changed the font to one called Bernard Condensed and I made sure her name fit into the circle nicely. Then I typed Morgan and for hers, I used a font called Christmas Day. I used the same font for Milo, but I did decide to add paw print. So I just went into images and did a quick search for paw prints and I found a pair that I liked. I resized them and made sure they fit nicely under his name. And then I attached them to his name. Now I have all of the names complete. Now you will recall that this first circle was just serving as a template for me to get the sizing accurately for my names and images that I wanted to use on my ornaments. What I'm going to do now is add an additional circle, a bigger circle that I will use to cut with my infusible ink. So what I'm going to do is get a larger circle, a circle that's actually three inches because that's the size that I'm going to use to cut out the infusible ink. By doing it this way, I can ensure that I will not have any white space around my ornament. I don't want to have any white space on the side that is supposed to be completely filled with buffalo check. So now that I have my words and my names sized accurately, I'm going to put them on the larger circle and I'll make sure they are centered appropriately. Now I can delete this smaller circle. I don't need it anymore. And what I'll do is change this larger circle to the light gray and I will duplicate it five more times to have a total of six circles because I'm making six ornaments. I'm essentially going to repeat this process six times. I'll get the ornament, send it to the back, put the name on top. I will click align. I'll select both. I'll click align. I'll click center. And at the bottom right corner, I will click slice. Then I'll just move out the extra sliced images. So there's the ornament, there's my son's name, and the extra image will be deleted. I'll repeat this process for Madison. Make sure the ornament is in the back. If it's not, just send the name to the front. I'll select both. I'll click align and center. Click slice. I'll move the ornament down move the darker version of her name down and delete the extra. I will speed the rest of this up. Now Milo's is going to be a little bit different because those paw prints are actually not welded to his name. So before I can slice it, I will click combine and weld the paw prints and his name. Then I can slice the full image out of the ornament template. So now I have all six designs. I have what will essentially be the front and the design that will go on the back and it is time to click make. Now I have the front images on one mat and I have the darker color, just the names on a different mat. However, I'm going to move everything to one mat. I'm just moving the ornament templates out so that I can make sure that nothing is touching and I'm just spacing it out the way that I see fit. Now I'm going to click those three dots and start to move all of the names to that first mat just by clicking on move object. Now that I have everything on the mat the way I want them, I am going to select the infusible ink transfer sheet cut setting and I am going to make sure that my mat is 
mirrored. So I'm going to turn on the option to mirror the design and everything I'll do from here will be back on the camera. When you open your package of infusible ink, it will be in a black bag that looks like this. Just uh, carefully open it and remove the infusible ink sheet from the package. Okay, there is also butcher paper inside and sometimes there is a lint cloth. It might still be in the package. There it is. Okay, so you can use this to wipe off the ornament before you actually um, press it. This package comes with two sheets, one black and one that's buffalo check. I'm going to put the black sheet back in the bag and I'm going to put this sheet on the green mat face up. it on the mat. I'm going to insert it into my Cricut just by pressing that flashing arrow. Remember my designs have been mirrored in Cricut Design Space and my infusible ink is on the mat with the pretty side up and I'm using the infusible ink transfer sheet cut setting. I'm going to press the C and let this start cutting and then I'll speed this part up. Okay, I grab my weeding tool. I can tell that it did cut through because I can see the letters still on the mat and it looks like I got a good cut. So I can remove this from the mat and start to weed this away from the backing. Now I have one of my ceramic ornament blanks and I hope you can see why I made the outer circle so much bigger because I don't want there to be any white space showing and I think the size that I use is perfect. So I'm going to remove the infusible ink from the mat and I'm going to cut away the circles, just one circle at a time and then I'll start to weed out the letters from the circles and you'll see all of that part as I go. So what I'm doing is weeding away the letters and I'm keeping the full pattern in a circle on the backing. So I'm just removing all of those letters and I think this one is Madison's ornament. And it's a perfect first start because you can see exactly what's going on. Now, I could save those letters and try to do something with them. Who knows? But for right now, they are just coming out. And I'm going to continue this same process for each of the circle templates. Now you can see what Madison's looks like and how it should fit nicely on the ornament. And I'm not removing the outer part of the circle just yet, but I will before I press each of the ornaments. Now I'm repeating this process, cutting around that circle. And this one is for miles, so I'm just removing the letters. Remember, I'm not removing any of the inner pieces. If there are letters that have inner pieces, I'm leaving them on. I am just removing the main part of the letter that you would normally keep when you're weeding.
I'm at the heat press now and I have butcher paper on the bottom of my heat press. And what I'm doing is placing the infusible ink face up. I'm going to place the double-sided ornament face down. I have the hole at the top that lets me know where the top of my image should go. And what I'm doing is adding Cricut heat-resistant tape to secure the ornaments in place. And once I have all six ornaments taped down, I will press this at 300 60 degrees Fahrenheit for 250 seconds. So I'm just adding about three or four pieces of tape to each ornament blank first. All six ornaments are in place. All of them have heat resistant tape on top. I'm going to add a sheet of butcher paper on top of this, and I'm going to press this at 360 degrees for 250 seconds. Okay, if you have been following me for any length of time, you already know this is my favorite part. And I am ready to peel it and reveal it. Let's take a <laughs> So you already know I'm going to say I love it. I love it. And I am so happy that I made that outer circle three inches it looks fantastic. Let's look at the second one. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let me calm myself down. Okay, let's see this next one. <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. I love it. This is Morgan's and it looks excellent even though i wasn't sure about the font oh my gosh this one is milo's and this look how cute that is omg wait until you see it on my christmas tree let's look at the last two one of them says merry christmas and the other one has miles name on it look at this it is fantastic and i love it I love it. All right, let's look at the last one. And there is Miles. They all turned out fantastic. Now let me get the other side of the images ready. And we will press those for an additional 250 seconds at 360 degrees Fahrenheit. I am placing a piece of butcher paper on my heat plate to protect it and i am going to quickly put the names on the opposite side of the infusible ink ornaments and i'm making sure they're right side up according to the hole that's at the top i will not use heat resistant tape for this side because this side is primarily the adhesive backing and i feel like it will be sticky enough on the ornament so I'll just get these placed on the ornament and then I'll press them at the same time and temperature. Then once they're finished, I will quickly add some twine or some string and we will go downstairs and get these put on the Christmas tree. Let's take a quick look at the other side. I'm already sure that they came out excellent and I'm excited. I'm so excited about this and hopefully you are too. So this is the one that says Merry Christmas. That's the second side. This is the first side. I love it. This is the one for Miles. That's the first side. That's the second side. This pattern is perfect for Christmas. Look at Madison's is excellent. I love it. Let's look quickly at Milo's. I think I love his the most. It's so cute. 
Let's look at this one. This one says Peter and Delanda. I love it just as much as I love Milo's. And here is the one for Morgan. This is fantastic. I'm going to add the twine now. So we are downstairs at my Christmas tree and you can see it behind me and I am just so in love with how these turned out. I just cannot express it enough. Hopefully you have found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye!